is, is still related primarily with amp control. And this has become one of uh, my sort of passions here. And this is this reducing pesticide runoff in urban waterways. And this has been a major concern here for the past decade. When the organophosphates, diazinon and propyrifos were phased out in 2003, the use of pyrethroids and other insecticides just literally skyrocketed. And again, most of it was probably targeted at controlling ants in and around structures. So this is where the problem began. And again, why, you know, why are we concerned about it? And it happens to be these two little uh, crustaceans here, this little mycid shrimp and this little water flea daphnia, that live in the water. Obviously, they're in the bottom of the food chain. But, uh, you know, they consume algae and other small organisms, trichus and whatnot, but these are the major indicators of toxins in the environment. So I have a cup of water with a little water flea in it. The boab collects some water from a stream or something in the San Diego area. Does it kill these fleas or not? And then they determine which insecticides and pesticides or herbicides are, are in the water itself. Now here, to give you an idea, the two materials we've been talking about, like the stippernil, that's that termidor material, or what's found in front line if you're using pest control for fleas and ticks. Bifenthrin is a, a material called Talstar, but a lot of the over-the-counter products, the home guards and other things that you see at Lowe's, have this particular uh, active ingredient in it. It's a pyrethroid. But I want to show you here what this toxicity looks like. So here's trout, and here's that mycid shrimp. You can see this is four parts per trillion will kill 50% of those little mycid shrimp in the water cup. And, and you can see here that Syriodaphnia, it's 78 parts per trillion. Now, you know, the question is, okay, what's a part per trillion? Now think about this. Here's the Exxon Valdez, right? The, the, the famous tanker that ran aground. And, and here you've got some figures about it. It carries 1.5 million barrels of uh, oil. That's uh, 62 million gallons of oil. One part per trillion are two cans of soda in the tank of that ship. Wow. It's like, wow. I mean, the kind of sensitivity that these organisms have and the kind of sensitivity we have now in being able to analyze water samples we easily detect the part per trillion. It's very easy to detect that. So again, it's a tiny amount of insecticide that's moving off-site where it was applied, you know, down into the waterway. And so this is the real problem. You know, the Water Quality Act says that you may not have pesticides in water, period. And so that, that's where all of this is, is really started to focus. And again, this is a typical scene probably here in San Diego. This is in our, our study areas in Riverside. Sprinklers go on in the morning and look at all the water runoff here. If we put a pesticide along the driveway or you put it out along the curb or whatnot, it's going to be washed then down into the street. Ultimately, the first heavy rainfall or whatnot, it's going to be flushed all the way into the water system and we're going to find it then downstream. Now, what we do is that we work with pest control companies, but we have our own projects with EPA and EPR. We do treatments, we do various kinds of treatments around the structure, and then we analyze to see how much of it is actually coming off site. So this is how we trap water along the curb. So we have this uh, high-tech thing here. It's a piece of styrofoam and a couple <laughs> sandbags. And you know our high-tech high, high -tech dam here builds up, and then we just uh, <coughs> use up what looks like a turkey baster. So it's made out of glass, special glass, so it doesn't absorb the pesticides. And then we just suck up a, a, a liter of that, and we take it in the laboratory, and it's analyzed then for pesticides. So that's a, a real piece of high-tech science. <coughs> Here's our other one. If we want to collect on the driveway, and again, remember, this driveway is really important. Again, notice how it slopes down to the, to the street here. We put something on that driveway, as soon as water hits it, people wash the car or irrigation went up, it's going to carry it down to the street. So again, another piece of high-tech science here, essentially some boards, boards with foam. And you can see here, uh, uh, Fred is collecting a water sample there. And then we're going to analyze it in the lab. So we, 
We know how it was applied, we know where it was applied, and then we decide how it moves off-site. And so this is what the project has, has been focusing on here for the past 10 years. And this is a, a complicated slide, but it, again, it just shows you the importance. Remember, I, I showed you that seriodaphnia, that, that little water flea, and here is the 50% point. Remember, it's 78 parts per billion of this uh, of the insecticide bifenthrin will kill 50% of those little water fleas. Up here, it takes 10 parts per billion to kill with, with the fipronil. Now, these Bs are, are bifenthrin treatments, and those Fs are the fipronil treatments. Notice in this particular case, all of the fipronil treatments are below this line, so it's a pretty safe treatment. That narrow treatment up six inches, out six inches, is not producing lethal amounts of fipronil runoff. But here you can see with the B treatments that for the first four weeks, we're getting a significant wash off of that bifenthrin every time we have a rain event or a water event. And, and this is one of the trends that, that we've been finding. When, when you spray and apply these pyrethroids, you have a tendency to move around quite a bit. So again, this is one of the reasons, as I mentioned before, you, you want to try to limit that broadcast sprays and whatnot. And people just, you know, spraying impervious surfaces like concrete and, and stucco and, 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 and sidewalk and driveway areas because, again, you can see it contributes to a pretty major runoff of, of pesticides. So this is what we want to avoid. So again, this is what I had showed you before. You know, treat the guidelines, eliminate conducive. You want to limit these, these broadcast sprays and you want to focus the treatments. And again, you want, to focus, you want to not treat areas where there are drains and potential runoff sites. French drains, you know, I'll show you a picture here in a minute, but you want to avoid areas where there might be runoff. You don't want to apply pesticide there. So again, you know, out in the lawn, around the, in the lawn and the garden area, it's a lot of French drains. And here you can see, this happens to be my yard, and you can see there's just after five minutes of, of irrigating here in the morning in the front, front bed, I've already got runoff, you know, heading down the street. If I would apply the pesticide around this particular drain area or whatnot, it would be down here in the street. Want to avoid that. Now, one of the ways to do that, as all people have to do is, is to take a, a one or two foot square piece of cardboard and place it over these and make sure you don't treat that area if you're going to spray, yeah. if you're going to do those kinds of treatments. Mm -hmm. Avoid, you know, any situations where you're going to get that kind of runoff. So you just want to avoid that. You, want, you don't want to treat along here. You don't want to treat down here. You, and even though you might see lots of ants walking down there, you know, you have to you have to get rid of the thrill of the kill. You know, you have to say, I'm not going to do that because if I put it there, it's going to go to the street. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the ants that stink, why get rid of the ants? Well, the question was, with the exception of the ants that stink, why get rid of the ants? Well, some of the ants will nest actually indoors. Odor's house ant, you will have occasionally indoors, and then that's a whole problem. Now, Argentine ants. Like your sweeter. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Again, you know, I, I, I've been in this a long time. People's tolerances of insects outside is one thing. But inside, spiders and insects are usually not tolerated very well. But ants don't carry disease, I don't believe? Oh, no, that's not quite true. Some of the ants do. That The one that I showed you there, that thief ant, that thief ant will actually carry poultry diseases. Uh, and, and, and disease in the feral ant will also mechanically transmit bacteria. So in hospital settings where feral ant is often a serious problem. Yeah, there are, like I say, this is one of those arguments. Again, you know, if you can tolerate ants, fine. But I find most people, you know, it's an issue. They don't eat a lot. I mean, they're quiet. But, but again, I'll, I'll even tell you though, you know, the Argentine ants here are relatively docile, but in Chile, when they come inside, they bite. So you'll be sleeping at night, and they'll actually bite. So, they're a little more aggressive in Chile than they are here. Don't ants also grab their mice? 
They do. They can if they get access to the wood. But the termites have their own defenses. You know, they have soldiers and chemicals. So, yeah, the insect world is, is, is a war. Yeah. So, I know lots of people say that, and I, I say, well, fine. Yeah, if, 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 you know, if there's a high tolerance for insects, yeah, <coughs> you, may, you may not have to do a lot of control. They usually stay outside. They typically come in in July when it gets really hot. And they come in for a little bit, and then they'll go back outside. And, and what happens, I think, is the native food sources, the, the things that they've been feeding on outside of here, are killed off in this intensive heat wave. And then they're, then they're sort of at a loss as to what to do. And then they come in. But when they come in, it's a real problem. Feed them sugar, water, You could do that. You could, you, as you mentioned, you could feed them baked. So again, I, you know, this part is just, you know, for, me, for, for your standpoint, if people are going you know, to ask you about these over-the-counter products, just try to encourage them not to put them on impermeable surfaces like concrete and places where they're going to run off. You know, where there are drains, around pool areas, in the backyard, and wherever that has a chance to run off. Just tell them to think about wherever water runs off, do not apply insecticides. How about those little traps you will buy in the market to have little holes in them? Yeah, you want to know about the traps that you buy in the market that have a little yeah. hole in them. Most, well, some of them are sugar water, but a lot of them are solid baits. And solid baits aren't going to work on the Argentines. They're just not going to take them. So, again, the liquid bait is, is the way to go if, if you have an Argentine problem. 